This tutorial is going to take a look at port forwarding on PFSense. Now the process is pretty straightforward, but since PFSense is so powerful, there's a few different ways that you can limit access, and I'm going to point to a video later that does a really good job of explaining that, but we're just going to take a look at the basics of port forwarding now. So before we get started, I just want to say that I have written instructions in the description of the video that you can use to follow along if you'd like. So the first thing that you have to do is log into the web portal of PFSense and then you can select firewall and then NAT. Now you're automatically going to be brought to the port forwarding section where you can select add. So there's an up arrow and a down arrow. This is just to say that, you know, as time goes on, you're going to have multiple rules potentially, and you can choose to add this rule above or below the existing ones. So at this screen, you can leave the interface as WAN, and in the protocol section, this can be left as TCP, change to UDP, or you can select TCP slash UDP if you'd like to port forward both. Now we selected WAN in the interface, and like I said initially, this is for a basic port forwarding setup. There are more advanced configurations for this, but we're not going to take a look at those in this video. In the destination port range, you can select a specific service if you'd like to do it that way, or you can use custom. Truthfully, there's no true difference. Personally, I like to manage it using the custom portion so that I can just see at a quick glance exactly which ports are being port forwarded, but the choice is yours. So you're gonna have to enter that in both locations, the from port and the to port. In the redirect target IP, you're going to add the IP address of the local server that you're looking to expose. So this is the device on your local network and the IP address for that. So in cases like this, you want to ensure that that device has a static IP address. This will ensure that you're always going to be forwarding to the correct device. If you're interested in setting a static IP address, you can select services, DHCP server. You can then select the interface and then at the bottom, you'll be able to add a static mapping. Finally, in the redirect target port, you're going to enter in the exact same port you used in the destination port range above. You can go through, give a description, and then at the bottom here, you're going to see the filter rule association, and it says add associated filter rule. We're going to take a look at this in a minute, but in summary, this is just going to add the firewall rule automatically. So you can go ahead and save this rule, and after you do, you're going to have to apply the changes. So at this point, the port is successfully forwarded, and if you head over to the firewall section, you'll see that the firewall rule was automatically created. You'll also see that it says NAT in front of the description, and that's just to let you know that it was automatically created. Now this is a very basic configuration. You can limit access to this, and there's a great video done by a friend of mine. His channel name is Tech Me Out. I'm going to link to it now, but he does a really good job of explaining how you can use aliases to limit access. He also does a great job of showing you how the port forwarding works, so I highly suggest that you check that video out. But this was just a quick video showing you how port forwarding works on PFSense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. And if you like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.